Prime Bill is now online. Hey guys and girls, and I'm going to show you how to set up a login system with Firebase Auth, plus add those users to Firebase Database. Let's go! Awesome! So here in my HTML code, I got my Google fonts, and below this, I got my style tag. In my body tag, I got some simple containers. Most importantly, I have info boxes with IDs on them. Last but not least, I got a button container with some important buttons, with on-click events, of course. Last but not least, I got my script tag below my body tag, so that way our body loads first, and then our script. Sweet! And then I got some nice CSS in my index.css file just to make the page look a little nicer. So the first thing we gotta do is to create a new Firebase project. I'm gonna call this Login with Firebase Database. Disable Google Analytics. Now we're just gonna let it create. Next up, Let's go ahead and create a web app. I'm just gonna call it the same thing, doesn't matter. And now we're gonna have to copy this HTML script reference into our HTML file. Once copied, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate the script tag, change it from app to auth and database. And just a side note, don't forget, these scripts must be above your index.js. That's important, so they load first before you can use them in your JS file. Lastly, we're going to have to copy this script config file and we're going to paste it in our own JS file. Next up, we're going to set up our authentication. To do this, we're going to use the simple email and password. Of course, you can use other ones, but email and password works. So let's set up our real time database. We're going to go ahead and use lock mode because we've always used test and we're going to change up the rules of lock mode so our read and write is equal to true. Of course this is going to give us a alert message. We'll fix this later on. Sweet. So now we can go back to our index.js and edit up this file. First thing we're going to do is to declare two variables. Our first is going to be our auth, which is going to be equal to firebase.auth. And below this, we're going to set our database equals to firebase.database. Great, so now we're going to set up our register function, which is going to register new users to our website. And don't forget, we're calling the function register in our HTML button. Great, so the first thing we're going to do is to get all the input fields we have in our HTML file. So that includes our email, password, full name, etc. So this next step is a bit optional, but it's always a good practice to validate your input fields. So I'm going to start off by creating a new function to validate our email address. And what this is going to do is going to check if our email address is correct format. So we're going to go to this website and copy this expression, which just validates using regex symbols and all that. And we're going to basically return true if it matches that format and return false if it doesn't. So that way we can validate if this is a right email address or if it's a, not an email address. Following this, we're gonna have to validate our password. And Firebase is really keen on this and they always want your password to be at least six characters long and this is just how they want it set up. But you can also have this set up so you can have capital letters or no capital letters or two numbers. You can have it do whatever you want. But we're just gonna keep it plain and simple and say if our password is less than six characters, then it's false. The next function is to validate the fields and all this does is to check if there's something written in those fields. So as long as there's something in those fields, it's good.
Awesome. So now in our register function, we can say if validate email is equal to false or if validate password is equal to false, then we return and we don't run the code anymore. And of course, you can have an alert message in here. Your email or password is out of line. But of course, you can be more specific about what the user needs to do in those individual functions, which is sweet. So let's go on and validate our input fields too. Sweet, so now we can go ahead and register this user. So we're gonna have to type in auth.createUser with email and password. And here we're gonna pass in our email and password, which are variables we have up top. And in this function call, it's gonna return a promise. And a promise has to have a dot then and a dot catch. And this dot then is gonna handle it when information is passed down to us. And dot catch handles errors that may occur which is gonna be Firebase telling you you screwed up somewhere. So we're gonna to have to log this out too. Great, so in our dot that function, the user has now been created and everything is all good. So we're gonna to have to create a new variable and call it user is equal to auth.currentUser. And then we can log out alert user created. Awesome, so now all we have to do is to save this user to our Firebase database. So now we're gonna create a variable and call it database ref. And we're gonna set this equal to our database variable up top dot ref. Next up, we're gonna create a variable user data, which is actually gonna be an object which contains our email, full name, and etc. And don't forget, never save your password to the database. That's what your auth is for. Lastly, in our object, we're going to create last login, and this is going to track when the user last logged in. Now we can go ahead and save our user data to our database. So we're going to save it under a subclass users slash, and here we're going to save it to our user unique ID. So that way we don't have any problems in the future. So we're going to type in user dot UID, which comes along with Firebase. Awesome. So when we go back to our website, refresh, we can now type in some fake data and see it in action. Great, so now we can see it saves to our database. And it also saves to our auth. So now let's go back and work on our login function. The first thing we're gonna have to do in our login function is to grab our email and password inputs and then we're gonna validate them below. To sign in, similar to our register function, we're gonna to have to type in auth.signin with email and password. And here we are gonna return a promise just like we did before. So let's go ahead and copy all the catch function And since we're gonna be like Facebook, we're gonna to have to update our last login parameter for this user. So we're gonna go ahead and copy all the database stuff, and we're gonna delete everything else except our last login. Don't forget to pass in your email and password to our promise function, and replace set with update. Lastly, we're gonna to have to pass an error to our catch function. Great, so when we go back to our website, refresh, put in your email and password, slap on login, you can now see our user is logged in. And we can also catch the Firebase database updating our last login parameter, which is sweet. And that's it, but there's one more thing we gotta cover, which is our database rules. Sweet, so there's a website I found that has some common Firebase database rules. And for this one, we're gonna use this rule. And this rule states, under our users category, have in our Firebase database, 
And under this users category, we have our UID, which is exactly how we set it up in our Firebase database. And we can only read and write if our current auth UID is equal to the UID of this database UID. So basically other users cannot edit other users parameters. Great. So now we change our rules. Let's just make sure everything still works. And awesome. It does. It saves it to our Firebase database and the user is also signed up with our auth system. And that's it guys. That's how to create a login system with Firebase authentication and save those users to Firebase database. Hope you guys found this useful and until next time, Ryan below.